At the height of the hot hatchback trend, when the likes of the Volkswagen Golf GTI and the Peugeot 205 helped to redefine the market for small practical cars with a sporting edge, one unexpected entrant into the ring of these highly profitable machines was Volvo, who brought forward in 1986 the 480, arguably among the most stylish hot hatchbacks of the era, but one that failed to truly compete with its European rivals. The story of the 480 begins in 1979, when the Dutch arm of the wider Volvo car company, Volvo Car Nederland BV, which had been established in 1973 after Volvo bought a majority share in the car division of Dutch manufacturer DAF, proposed a revised platform on which to build a new generation of Dutch Volvo cars, the main demand being for a car with front-wheel drive and a wheelbase of 2.5 metres. Seeing the trends for hot hatchbacks growing significantly towards the end of the 1970s, the Dutch Volvo design office in Helmond considered that their new model, rather than being a traditional family car as per Volvo's previous range of vehicles, should instead be a trend-setting sporty compact, while Jan Vilsgaard, head of the main Volvo design department in Gothenburg, Sweden, was entertaining proposals from both internal and external designers, among whom was the Italian Carrozzeria Bertoni, who had formed an alliance with Volvo to help develop the controversial 262C personal luxury car. Designed by John de Vries of the DAF Helmond office, he brought forward a car that encompassed a striking roofline, large glass surface, and a steep rear window. And once all proposals had been delivered, this superb-looking coupe was recognised by the main Volvo management as a model that would not only stand out against other hot hatchbacks of the time, which were normally quite boxy, but also provide a spiritual successor to the P1800 sports car of the 1960s. Therefore, the design was approved on June 9, 1981. Much of the inspiration behind the design was owed to the recently launched Ford Sierra, a car that, while receiving mixed reviews upon its launch, quickly set the trend as to how regular family cars could be styled in such a way that made them look sleek and sporty, as opposed to its square-shaped predecessors of the 1970s. This desire for a streamlined look, however, did present problems when it came to production, the sharp nose, for instance, requiring significant work in order to make pressing the slabs an efficient process, while roof guttering for the car was dropped in favour of plastic door covers that ran from the A-pillar to the top of the rear side windows. Plastic and synthetic materials were key elements of the 480's concept, and, aside from the door covers, were also incorporated into the 5 mile an hour bumpers that had been added to meet American road safety legislation, the use of plastic being preferred over metal, as they could be painted to match the colour of the car, rather than appearing as last minute additions. Perhaps the most distinguishing feature of the 480 is its pop-up headlights, this choice serving a dual purpose of style and substance by also meeting US safety legislation which required headlights on low-slung sports cars to be a certain height off the ground in order to be visible in the rear-view mirrors of preceding cars. As the launch date for the 480 approached, pre-production prototypes were flown to Australia in order to undergo hot weather tests in the outback, to which no problems were incurred, while Volvo made sure that their upcoming model wasn't spied on by having the tests always conducted in the presence of a large trailer, which could block the view for any potential spectators. Eventually, the car underwent its press launch on October 15, 1985, followed by its first public showing at the 1986 Geneva Motor Show on March 5, before it was officially put on sale in May, with assembly for the car being undertaken at the DAF factory in Bourne, Holland, alongside the Volvo 360 family saloon, while the platform would later form the basis of the 360's replacement, the 440 of 1987. Critical reviews of the car complemented its outlandish styling, especially when considering Volvo's reputation for practical though humdrum family saloons, but saw near universal complaints as to it being woefully underpowered for a machine that was meant to rival the likes of the Volkswagen Scirocco. Power for the 480 was derived originally from a 1.7 litre F3N inline 4 power plant, which was married to either a 5 speed Renault JC5 manual or a 4 speed ZF 4HP 14Q automatic transmission, giving the car 107 horsepower and providing a 0 to 60 time of 9 seconds and a top speed of 118 miles an hour, while the rival Volkswagen Scirocco GTI had a 0 to 60 time of 7.4 seconds and a top speed of 127 miles an hour. Upon its launch, Volvo had huge plans for the 480, with a proposed annual sales rate of 10,000 cars for the European market and 25,000 cars for the American market, requiring the construction of a new production line at the Bourne factory that opened in 1987. But even this, with its 20,000 cars per year capacity, wasn't enough to satisfy Volvo's proposed output. Unfortunately, the car's potential for sale, especially in the USA, wasn't set in stone, and it wouldn't be until 1988 that the first 480s were exported to the American market once the 1.7 Turbo had been released earlier that year, 
but while 1988 was the peak of 480 sales, with 16,000 units leaving showrooms across Britain, Italy, the Netherlands, Sweden, Germany, Belgium and France, not a single car was sold in the United States, compounded further by new American legislation being enacted in 1989 that required a further design change. After two years of development, Volvo unveiled in March 1990, at that year's Geneva Motor Show, a cabriolet version of the 480 which included the 1.7-litre turbo engine and an anti-roll bar, a model that was received warmly by critics but ultimately failed to enter full-scale production when one of the main suppliers collapsed into bankruptcy during the 1991 global economic recession. This led instead to the ES two-tone of 1992, which provided a series of upgrades in order to try and improve sales for the ailing model, followed by further mechanical improvements in 1993 that included the introduction of a 2-litre engine and a catalytic converter, but sadly nothing could help reverse the car's fortunes, even following a drop in retail price in 1994. In 1990, Volvo proposed a second-generation 480 that would comprehensively redesign the car, replacing the pop-up headlights with normal ones, and revising the bonnet and bumpers to give the car a more aggressive look, but due to the failure of the car to sell in great numbers, the Dutch arm of Volvo was unable to repay the costs incurred when building the new 480 production lines at Bourne, and by 1991 was in serious financial trouble. As the former car division of DAF was a major employer in the Netherlands, and represented a significant part of the car market in the country, the Dutch government, together with Mitsubishi Motors, bought equal shares in the firm in August 1991 to help pay off the company's debts, an agreement that lasted until 1992, when the Dutch government sold off its shares to Volvo and Mitsubishi, thereby making it a joint venture between the two builders, dubbed Nedcar BV. However, as space was required at the Bourne factory to sell both Mitsubishi products, starting with the Charisma, and Volvo products, including the highly successful 460, which was now the highest selling Volvo car in the Nedcar division, the 480, having struggled along with poor sales, was axed, with the last of 80,463 units rolling off the production line on September 7, 1995, the overall design of the car being essentially unchanged since its release nine years earlier. In the end, the Volvo 480, while a drastic change away from the regular image of Volvo cars, was a model plagued by underperformance and the general reputation of the Volvo brand. Therefore, attempts at selling a hot hatchback under this name, despite the best intentions, was one that failed to truly win over the buying public, especially in the United States, a market that the car was specifically designed for.